club to try out in a year. It's been a year since I worked. Um, I can say that I got lucky or blessed or attracted or whatever. Somebody that's been helping take care of me for a while up until a few months ago. And uh, as of, I don't know when, um, I really realized like, all right, you really need to go back to work. <laughs> uh, especially because the whole world might shut down again because Mr. Uh, Amnesia Biden is probably going to shut the whole planet down again. Um, or probably should shut the whole planet down. So, um, so that's what I'm doing right now. I am in Dallas and because I forgot my little piece of paper uh, that has my social security number on it, whatever the fuck that means, I can't, well, I say I can't go work at the clubs in Dallas, um, but maybe I could. And if, you know, depending on how it goes, it, I'm going to Rick's. So depending on how things go there, if, uh, you know, if, you know, whatever, and if I not stand there, then I will end up going back to the lodge or to baby dolls and um, and see if they will, you know, let me come back. It's been over a year. Well, I say let me come back. Nah, I'm not going to get any of that shit. Um, I don't, I don't know that I have my job at either of those places. And either, even if I didn't, um, I, uh, um, oh, it takes, like, uh, after a year, they, supposedly, they redo all of your paperwork, all of your, like, you know, all your paperwork. So I would need, um, social security card and whatever else. So I'm going to see what, what this place says. Um, I like the idea of this club because it's right next to the airport. And, um, I don't know. I just kind of, I don't know. I've heard good things about it. So... But if not, I'm gonna go into the lodge first and see if they can pull up all my, you know, previous pieces of paper that say it's okay for me to be there. And if it doesn't work there, I'm gonna go to Baby Dolls and see what they say. And uh, Baby Dolls is interesting because I have more views on my Baby Dolls review um, videos than like on on like a lot of my videos because I don't know I just I, I guess I showed up in Google uh, for quite a while with with all of my reviews um, and I had managers from there uh, message me I had like uh, I don't know just a lot of people that worked in the club that had been in the club for a long time message me from there so you know uh, I don't know we'll see what happens I don't want to go to fucking baby dolls because I don't want to dance on seven stages at a time. I just would rather really not do that. Um, the lodge, I never worked at at night, so if I could go work there, that'd be great. Um, and if neither of those or none of those work out, then I've got a backup plan. So we'll see what happens. Um, let me think of something educational and happy to share with you girls Let's see here um no matter what you want it can happen is the first thing that came to my mind um i don't really have like a nice long-winded story to go with that at the moment though um okay well i'll say this to uh to you know to not well to new girls or to any girls whatever i haven't worked in a long time it's been literally probably been about exactly a year actually yeah it's been about exactly a year um and the other day when i went to go um to work But my stomach 
tacos and knots all day and then I, you know, finally finished getting ready to go and started walking to the elevators at the building I'm staying in. And I started to, to like, I started to like dry heat. Like I, I was like, you're about to throw up. And I, you know, try mind over matter, right? Try to brush it off. Like, no, you're fine. You're fine. Go to fucking work. You're fine. And um, I pushed the button to call the elevator and the door opened and I was like, no, you're really about to throw up. So I went back to the apartment and as soon as I got there, uh, I threw up. Like I, you know, fortunately most of it got into a spot that was not uh, on the floor. But um, so I just want to say that like, been in it for a while and even if you're new especially if you're new um you know nerves happen like apparently there's something like you know and I don't really know what it is if like it truly if I had to peg it for you I couldn't tell you what it is because I know for sure that part of the reason why people get nervous about the idea even just the idea of rejection is because I, I know I've mentioned this before, but back in tribal days when people would get rejected from the tribe, like if you got kicked out of the tribe, you were going to die. And uh, this is according to Tony Robbins, this, this next aspect that when people get rejected, they, the pain center in their brain lights up as if they're actually in physical pain. And that's a brilliant design from, you know, an old reptilian style brain, one of the three brains, maybe not back quite that far, but um, it's, an, it's, it's a great design. It really is, but it's not necessary anymore because I'll put it this way. If you were to go try out at a club and you were to make a total fool out of yourself, let's say, who cares? It doesn't even matter the reason why to make a total fool out of yourself um and you were to be like I can't even live in this city anymore you know like I'm so embarrassed for whatever reason um you could literally just pack your bags and move and go to a new place and change your whole life literally all you have to do is just delete your social media and just move to a new place and you can become a completely new human being and no one knows you and you can just recreate and redesign your life any which way you want. So the old days like that are over. Um, they're very over. Um, so, so knowing that confuses me as to why and I don't, for myself, I don't think it's rejection. I'm positive it's not rejection that is the, the you know, thing or whatever that makes me nervous. Um, and I don't think nervous is the right word. Um, uh, but uh, that, I don't know, made me feel fucking sick. Sick enough to throw up. Um, oh, shit. Um, so... I just want to let you know, you know, if you get nervous going into work, I literally think, I believe, I 100% believe that the thing, that, the only thing that can stop nervous feelings is from doing it enough. That's it. You know, they say do the thing that you fear and the fear will go away. And that's really true. Um, an example is... So I heard that, well, according to my Myers-Briggs profile, which is fascinating, by the way, um, Myers-Briggs is a 16personalities.com. If you feel like taking about a 12-minute personality test, you can learn a lot about yourself. And I use it on other people to, you know, see if I vibe with them, if I want to talk to them anymore or not. Um, which might sound fucked up, but whatever. Um, and... Oh, shit. Um, so, um, uh, why was it bringing up Myers Briggs? Oh, so it says on my profile straight up, you should not do anything that is live. It was like, live's not for you. Like, 
do, um, you know, record. Record instead. Oh, this is my turn. Record instead and edit it. And, you know, that way you'll feel more comfortable. Oh, shit, that was my turn. Um, and I know that that's true. I 100% know that that's true. But there is a lady named Sarah Blakely who is from Clearwater, Florida, just like I am. And her and I actually have a lot in common. And she's the first self-made self-made female billionaire and she says that she intentionally makes herself uncomfortable on a regular basis like getting into an elevator she will um getting into an elevator she'll um start to sing, you know, with other people in there just to make herself uncomfortable. And because she said that, I was like, okay, I should probably do that. Do I want to? Fuck no, but I should probably do that. So I decided I was going to start to, you know, intentionally try to make myself uncomfortable. So the first thing that, you know, one of the things on my Myers-Briggs profile was, you know, do everything recorded. Don't do anything live. And I uh, decided to go live on YouTube for 30 days. You guys can see some of my, I called it my Red Room series because I was, I would put my in- incredible uh, red light on, my red light therapy light on, and I would just sit there and bake in the heat. It just felt incredible. And then I would just, you know, talk. Um, I 100% thought that the entire time, I was going to um, be very awkward and uncomfortable and um, whatever the whole time. And just eventually I was going to just get used to it. Because I'd heard that whole saying, like, you know, do what you fear. And, you know, basically it'll the fear will go away or whatever. And so I thought that that was what was the deal. I thought I was just going to eventually, I was just going to get used to it. And I was just going to be, like, still super uncomfortable. But I was going to deal with it. Well... To my surprise, that's not what happened at all. Um, What happened was by the fourth day, I didn't care anymore. And let me tell you, that surprised the shit out of me because I thought that, you know, the whole time I was going to feel uncomfortable and whatever. And that just wasn't the case. I just got to the point that I, I just got to the point that I was like, it's 11 o'clock. I got to push record. And then I would just push record and I was fine. So when you hear something like, you know, do the thing that you fear and the fear will go away. Um, it's true. The fear will go away. It's not that you just get used to it. It goes away. So anyway, now that I'm here, I'm not even like, I'm not even, I'm not nervous or anything at all. I'm a little bit tired and I don't feel like going in but I'm at the spot that I need to go. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I'll let y'all know how it goes. Ciao.